you so much for joining me in another video. So as you can tell, based on the title, we are talking about Celine. We are talking about old Celine, so the Phoebe Philo era of Celine, and we are talking about the handbags of this era. This was a very requested video. I think when you talk about people like the Olsen twins or like Thoreau and Carolyn Bissett Kennedy, it's hard to ignore someone like Phoebe Philo or like this era of Celine. So I want to talk about these iconic bags from this era, why they really defined sort of this era of Celine. Specifically, I want to talk about the 2010s because she was the creative director from 2010 to 2018 and now Eddie Sloman is the creative director and has been since. We're just going to talk about Celine and the handbags that she created. Really focus on the more iconic styles. While I was researching Phoebe Philo, what people had to say, like she's critically acclaimed, fashion editors love her, but like what is Phoebe Philo Celine? Like I really want to explain what this is to not only people that love her work, but like also to people that are just like, why? Why is Phoebe Philo so revered? Like why is she one of the greatest fashion designers of our time. So we're gonna talk about that. We'll talk about a bunch of things. We'll talk about minimalism. We'll talk about how she did color. We'll talk about sort of the social commentary of her pieces, why it was so groundbreaking. So for her collection, her first collection, spring, summer 2010, this was the first handbag that we got to see. It was the first look we got to see. It really set the tone. It really set the mood for what we would see in terms of what Phoebe Philo had to bring at Celine. And I'm talking about this bag, guys. This is the Celine, what is called the classic bag. It's often referred to as the box bag. If you look at it, it's just overall very boxy. You also saw a lot of other bags in the 2010s era like this. Like we saw Chanel had the boy bag come out around the same time. Dior had the Diorama bag, YSL, the Kate bag. There are all these kinds of boxy structured bags that we saw become very popular in 2010. And this buckle right here, this gold buckle, was something that she continued using on throughout many collections. We saw this on belts, we saw this on bracelets, on other accessories. While this isn't like a logo per se, like the way, you know, Chanel had like the boy, like CC logo, this was one of her design elements that she would use. This whole collection overall was extremely minimalist. You had lots of camels, khaki, like neutrals, fitted and flattering clothing, something that we don't see as much in some of her later collections, which we'll talk about. But there's also this deconstructed element of the clothing, unusual seams, unusual layering. It was very 2010, but when we look back at it, it's still very classic. I look at every single item, article of clothing, and I'm like, I could wear that today. When we're talking about the clothing, it's minimal, but it was sort of this minimalism redefined. For Phoebe Philo, when this collection came out, she described it as, I thought I'd clean it up, make it strong and powerful, a kind of contemporary minimalism. Vogue articles at the time would describe this collection as sort of sexy utilitarianism. This concept of sexiness kind of is something that we don't see as much in later collections, which we'll talk a little bit about later, but this concept of minimalism and minimalism for women is something that she pretty much carried on throughout many of her years at Celine. And when I talk about minimalism, especially on a platform like YouTube, when we think about minimalism, especially like the content around minimalism, it's always like this quantitative thing. It's always capsule wardrobes or like having three handbags. There's kind of like this number attached to like how many things you should have. When I speak about minimalism in terms of how Phoebe Philo applied it, it's not about having a capsule wardrobe. It's actually an aesthetic philosophy that is very much rooted in design history and art history. And I just really want to emphasize this. Not that there's anything wrong with like a quantitative approach to minimalism, like how many items you have. It's actually also an aesthetic philosophy. So that's what I'm really trying to emphasize. I think minimalism just ultimately means a lot of different things to people, but I just wanna go back to basics and talk about minimalism in terms of an aesthetic philosophy and specifically how like artists and designers use minimalism. I found this really great definition from the Tate Museum's website. If you haven't been to the Tate, it's like a really cool museum in London. This is how they defined minimalism. Minimalism or minimalist art can be seen as extending the abstract idea that art should have its own reality and not be an imitation of some other thing. We usually think of art as representing an aspect of the real world, like a landscape, a person, or even a tin of soup, or reflecting an experience such as an emotion or feeling. With minimalism, no attempt is made to represent an outside reality. An artist wants the viewer to respond only to what is in front of them, the medium or material from which it is made, and the form of the work is the reality. 
reality. Minimalist painter Frank Stella famously said about his paintings, what you see is what you see. Phoebe Philo said, clothes are clothes, deal with what you see. And I think that's the exact same mentality. These are just clothes and we need to look at them like they're clothes. The way minimalist and like abstract artists would just look at paint as this like material thing, clothing as this functional object that we wear. I think sometimes fashion and art, while they have similar trajectories, there's not always like a one-to-one -one comparison. Some might be like, yeah, it's apples and oranges. But when we're talking about Phoebe Philo's minimalism, there's a reason why I'm using this definition of art. When we talk about this handbag, right? This very classic, handbag, if there's no branding, versus this is the vintage version. So this is the 1970s horse carriage version. So this is actually a box leather. As you can see, it's got like this horse carriage detail. It is very representational. It represents a logo. It is very intentional to have this decorative element. And I think sometimes fashion is very much focused on, and even just when we're styling clothing, we're very interested in like, how do we create a vibe? Like what vibe are we creating? Or, you know, are we trying to like channel something? Is something supposed to look like 1960s or for like Gucci like 1970s and when we think about even like new Celine right like the newer variation of this bag the Triomphe bag it's actually supposed to reference the Arc de Triomphe which is you know this famous Parisian iconic landmark and this concept of like a Parisian woman is very much reflected in like the Eddie Sloman version of Celine. This doesn't reference anything. Like maybe it does. Maybe it references a classic silhouette, right? Like it's a very classic silhouette. And of course, fashion is always going to reference something. Okay, I'm not saying that her work cannot be referenced, but she's just not concerned with that. And that's kind of the thing. Like she's not worried about create a mood by making something look like it's referencing like a certain decade or creating a vibe. It is just about creating clothing as she would describe something that is strong and powerful and a contemporary minimalism. And I really think while she's not really like referencing a vibe or like a century or a decade or an era in fashion, I actually think she's referencing a lot of contemporary art. To me, when I look at her work, I see modern art, like modern art of like the 20th century. Like I see Frank Stella, I see like the way she mixes color, Mark Rothko, like color field paintings. There's that famous Yves Klein dress where she's actually referencing like an Yves Klein painting where women actually press their bodies against a canvas. It was that sort of era of modern art was more so concerned about like the materiality of paint rather than making like a painting of a nude woman. What can paint do? Whether you're Jackson Pollock splattering paint or you're Mark Rothko trying to create emotion with color. This is probably the closest way to make any kind of reference to something that we understand is looking at it like the way we look at art. That's how we have to understand Phoebe Philo. And specifically, I would say modern art from that modern era around 20th century, like a lot of art that was being created in New York. Like if you go to the Guggenheim, you know what I'm talking about. So bag number two I want to talk about is the Celine luggage tote. It's also like the phantom tote, but it's kind of the same family. This is probably the most iconic, the most popular. So many people have this bag. It's kind of like the first bag you think of when you think about the Phoebe Philo era of Celine. It was honestly such a popular bag because it was a really great work bag. It kind of had its own like design features. There's something very modern and of the time for that handbag. This leads me to my next point where I want to really emphasize this concept of like modern fashion, like fashion that is like forward over fashion that is necessarily classic. When I look at that 2010 spring summer collection, there's something very classic about that whole lineup of clothing. As we get into some of her later collections, the concept of making clothing that is classic or universally classic isn't really a priority. It's more about creating clothing that is modern and what it specifically means to the modern woman. It's not rooted in tradition. It's not rooted in what the conventional woman wants to carry. This is for women today. Like this is for that working woman. And this is one of the reasons why she's so highly revered within a fashion criticism, like fashion critique world, I suppose. There's an underlying social commentary with her clothing in general with a lot of her collections and certain pieces there's kind of an element of like oddity or like weirdness it's never like frivolous in like a traditional feminine way phoebe Philo actually described her work as strong powerful and reduced and she would showcase collections on international women's day she was very intentionally a feminist like there's this very intentional feminism behind her work there is really just this attitude of clothing 
for the modern professional woman or more so women that would be sort of dubbed as like the professional managerial class simply because frankly a lot of these clothes and a lot of these bags are very expensive like this is not for necessarily the everyday woman this is for the professional working woman people maybe in like creative industries will appreciate because there's kind of this oddity to it but i would say more so is these bags and i would say a lot of her clothing in general was designed for women in that professional managerial class. So not necessarily upper like bourgeoisie class. And then, you know, there's the working class, but there's also this like class of people that manage production that want a nice bag, that want nice clothing, that want to feel nice, but not in like that traditional Chanel way. And with Phoebe Philo's fashion, it was also very man repelling. When we think about things like the furry slides, right, that are really popular now, five years ago, that was really weird and strange. This concept of like ugliness, not being concerned with the male gaze was sort of a prevalent theme and Phoebe Philo's work. Like she doesn't want to necessarily make you look sexy. Maybe the first couple collections, there was a little bit of that. And in terms of these handbags, when we look at the classic bag, when we look at the luggage tote, a lot of sort of like variations or combinations of these types of bags arose. Like there was the trapeze bag, which kind of looks like a fusion of the two. Other styles, like honestly, I could probably go even further and make this a really long video. I don't think it's really necessary, but some other like shout outs, like the trio bag was a really popular bag, a really nice, easy crossbody bag. There was also the tie knot bag, the troder bag, there was the trifold bag, the sangle bucket bag, the cabis totes. But one thing about a lot of these bags is they were just meant or designed for the working woman in mind. When we have like tote bags, right? Like a lot of these designers will do a tote variation of a very popular bag. Chanel might take a cocoa handle bag and turn it into a tote bag. Very rarely will these designer brands make a tote that is very work appropriate. And again, minimal logos, you know, work appropriate, like most people, depending on the industry you work for, you know, a lot of people may not want to wear a logo to work. That's like a topic on its own. When it came to the third bag, I really had to think like, what's the third bag I want to highlight? I have to give it to this bag that I think has like maintained its staying power. It's still a bag that Celine sells today. There's very little left of Phoebe Philo Celine at current day Celine, but you can still buy the Celine belt bag. This is a really great work bag. With a lot of these designers today that kind of just look at, you know, larger bags as an afterthought, although that could be changing with the whole bigger bag trend coming back. It's not necessarily about making bags that are bigger or like making a toe variation. For her, it's about creating a new bag that is specifically for that working woman. And I remember seeing this bag often in bi-color variations, even the Celine luggage bag. And even her clothing, there's always kind of this color blocking element, like blocking of color. But one thing about how she uses color, she doesn't try to make color combinations in like an aesthetically pleasing way. That's very subjective, what is aesthetically pleasing, but just kind of like a general rule of thumb when it comes to color, Anything that is like a color combination you see in nature is probably like universally attractive. Sunsets are beautiful, roses are beautiful, floral combinations are beautiful. Maybe because they remind us of these things, we think of those color combinations as pretty. Phoebe Philo, when she used color, she did not care about that. If anything, it was to make things seem so strange and unusual. I think of how she would use these like bicolor, these color blocking combinations in this very non-conformist way. It was almost like she was doing the opposite of creating like these beautiful color combinations we're used to in nature. She took these very ugly man-made colors and put them together. Like she would take an Ikea blue color and then mix it in with brick red. Those two color combinations look really strange together but she would somehow make it interesting. There's kind of this like industrial nature to how she uses color, like it's very man-made. I would almost call it even like this brutalist approach to color. It is not meant to make things pretty. 
BB Fowl is not interested in making things pretty or aesthetically pleasing or to create combinations that we're used to. It is about breaking the rules and doing it in a way that is representative of the time. Like what are the colors that you would see in a city on your way to work? What are colors that you see on the subway? What are colors that you see in a construction zone as you're rushing from one meeting to the next? What are the color combinations that you see on a city block? The way she used color is kind of unlike anyone else. It kind of just represents that sort of like strange, you can't really like pinpoint what it is, but like when you think about these color combinations as man-made, it kind of starts to make sense. So in conclusion, I think we can ultimately say Phoebe Philo sort of reimagined what modern women want in their clothing. There's almost like a reflection of her. Like this is how she likes to dress and she's kind of marketing it to many other women, professional managerial women. Kind of this emphasis of like workwear, but also like minimalism, but also fashion that is like man repelling. I think that's why she's so respected by the fashion critics of our time because the underlying social commentary of her clothing was something that really wasn't touched upon by anyone before. It is this like feminist philosophy that she takes with her clothing. It's not so blatant, right? Like it's not like Dior. That would be too representational for her, like too obvious these kind of like statements on t-shirts. Like it's not about that. It's about how women can dress, not caring about the male gaze, not caring about looking pretty or caring about prettiness. For her, it was just really a reflection of what I think she was experiencing as someone who's risen in the ranks in like the fashion world, like the professional managerial woman. But it does make me wonder, like, you know, she left the fashion world in 2018. I do feel like we've definitely felt her absence. Like there hasn't really been a Phoebe Philo figure. Like, yes, there are certain brands that have sort of similar aesthetics, like the row, Jill Sander, even brands like Totem. Like I think the Row is kind of like the brand I think of the most. With Phoebe Philo, like I mentioned this in the video I did about the Row, but Phoebe Philo is very concerned about the working woman. As she's left fashion in 2018 and then the pandemic happened and we're still waiting for her collection. I'm so excited to see what she comes out with. The pandemic has changed what work looks like for women. And that was kind of what her fashion was always interested in. And I, it does make me wonder, like, what is her new collection going to look like? What do you guys think? Like, you know, women aren't necessarily going into the office as much. Now, you know, the world is opening up so we can, but you have a lot more flexibility nowadays to work from home. Like not all jobs necessarily need you to be in like a physical office space. The idea of like a work wardrobe, what does that look like for women in 2022? A lot of brands have been doing this man repelling approach to fashion. Think about like dad sandals, think about brands like Balenciaga, Chanel's dad sandals, super popular. We've seen a lot of this like man repelling stuff and I think, I don't know, will people get over it? It's almost become so commercialized like this man repelling fashion has become so like everywhere. There are a lot of brands doing this sort of Phoebe Philo aesthetic, like it has become very commercialized in many ways. Is this still going to be popular? And will we see this like man repelling approach to fashion with her new collection? Makes me wonder. When we think about the pandemic and what it's kind of done for women and working women. I think of like in Canada, we have what's been called the she session. Lots of women, people in general, but more women than men say, have decided to leave their jobs or maybe they just didn't have a job to go to because the companies they worked for just went out of business or decided they wanted to pursue something else, start their own business. This concept of like working in like an office setting, going to work and like the clothing you would wear going to work. Maybe that has changed, right? I'm just super curious to see how her collection is going to appear after all the events of the pandemic has happened. For working women, like what does this look like? And maybe as someone who did take time off to spend with her family, like will she have a different perspective of what clothing for women means? So I'm super curious Please let me know what you guys think in the comments. What do you guys think of just Celine, Phoebe Philo, Celine in general? Are you guys excited for Phoebe Philo's collection? Like seriously, when is it coming out? What are your thoughts on the handbags and just her general style? I would love to hear your thoughts and thank you so much for joining me 